Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. This is Ty Gwen. He apparently got into World of Tanks as a result of watching my YouTube videos, and then switched to World of Warships again as a result of watching my YouTube videos. Ty, I am so very sorry. I do hope you can find it within your heart to forgive me. Um, he is in the Tier 8 Premium German Heavy Cruiser, the Prinz Eugen, but this is not his Prinz. What the hell was that? Did you see that? I need to see that again. The hell? <laughs> Somebody give that man a speeding ticket. Um, oh no, Ty Gwen. You're a scroll wheel zoomer. Oh, this is going to trigger so many people. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you're all just going to have to put up with it. Um, it's safe to say that Ty Gwen was suffering from numerous lag issues at the beginning of this battle, uh, with friendly ships repositioning all across the map like that right at the start, and he suffers a couple of lag spikes as he's moving up into position over here. And yes, he is a mouse wheel zoomer. Um, he's also not using any premium consumables. That's probably going to trigger more people. Which is, I've always thought was kind of bizarre, because when you see people using premium in World of Tanks, they get nothing but abuse and scorn. But when you see people not using premium in World of Warships, they get nothing but abuse and scorn. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, and there's one of those lag spikes I was talking about. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the logic behind that one is. But you might have heard the news that on the test server, Wargaming are currently messing around with the idea of getting rid of standard consumables altogether. All consumables will be premium by default. Any premium consumables that you have in stock um, will be removed, and I believe you'll be credited with the credit value. So, this is all good news. Ooh, more good news. Enemy Wukong, light cruiser, decided to just sail around the corner in the open and give everybody his broadside, and Tai Gwen has the armor piercing loaded. Citadels for everyone! <laughs> Although, he is a heavy cruiser, not a battleship, armed with 8-inch guns, not 15 or 16-inch guns, so he doesn't delete him instantly, but hey, more damage is more damage. Next, the enemy Vesteros decides to sail around the corner inside spotting range, which of course means he's also inside hydro range, which uh, Ty Gwen triggers, which also means that he gets instant notification, well everybody gets instant notification, of the Vastarossa's torpedoes. The Wukong still om nom nomming on those tasty German citadels. I have no idea why he's taking this long to turn around and get the hell out of there because all of the damage that was inflicted on him on his way out to the map border is going to be inflicted on him again on his way back into cover around the side of that island. You really have to wonder about the thought processes of a light cruiser player who steams out from behind an island into the middle of open water sees one heavy cruiser and two tier 8 battleships, and doesn't immediately turn around and duck back into cover. What's most surprising about this is that that guy is still somehow alive, and causing problems for Ty Gwen, not because he's shooting back at him, because he's spotting him for that North Carolina over there. Yeah, the North Carolina is going to be problematic. But then again, the Wukong is still giving broadside. Time to switch back to the armor-piercing boys. And if the two battleships with us can't finish him off, let's see if the Prinz Eugen can. Then again, perhaps it's not quite so surprising that the Wukong survived for as long as it did, because one of the two battleships with Tai Gwen is a Richelieu, and the old Richie Lulu would quite infamously struggle to hit the side of a barn from the inside. There is also the small matter of the fact that the Richelieu was last seen running away at full speed, and all of its guns are in the front, so, you know, there's that. It may also be worth pointing out at this stage that even though Ty Gwen has gotten off to a cracking start in the Prinz Eugen, he doesn't actually own a Prinz Eugen. He's had this ship on rental for only two days. And the Prinz Eugen always used to be a bit of a joke, where Tier 8 premium cruisers were concerned with miserable damage per minute, only eight guns and a very slow reload, pretty bad armour. Although she does have a turtleback arrangement covering her citadel, although well, that's only really effective at close range against other cruisers, definitely not battleships. But recognising that the Prinz Eugen and her sister ship, the non-premium Admiral Hipper, were in need of a little bit of love, Wargaming buffed them. 
the Hipper gained a very welcome DPM buff by having the reload of her main gun battery um, improved. And while the Eugen still has the same slow reload, she does have the highest armor piercing damage of any tier 8 cruiser on with 8 inch guns, and she gained a heal. Which Ty Gwen is probably going to need to start using if that North Carolina lands any further hits. There are not many cruisers in the game below tier 9 that aren't British who have the repair party consumable. The Graf B has it at tier 6, the American USS Boise has it at tier 7, and only the Prince Eugen and the Adago have it at tier 8. Oh wait, wait, I forgot about the Italian Abruzzi and the Pan American Nuevo de Julio, again, both at tier 7. But even if you include those two, that's not a very long list. And having that heal definitely gives you more options in the Prince Eugen. And while the damage per minute is still pretty miserable, the armor piercing shells are rather spicy. He just sit at Old North Carolina at a range of 11 and a half kilometers. And if you thought that was a fluke, well, just hang on to his beer. Yep, he just went and did it again. The 925 meter per second muzzle velocity of these 8 inch armor piercing shells delivers very nice flat firing arcs. Now the downside of that is that you can't abuse island cover to lob shells over in the same way that you typically see on American cruisers. The upside is that even in ranges of 11 and a half kilometers they produce a nice flat firing arc which means that instead of just skipping off the armored deck the shots tend to punch right through the armored upper belt instead. Not really quite sure what exactly is going on down to the south there. The, uh, the Richelieu there just did a drive-by on the North Carolina and somehow managed to not kill him. And now he's chasing after the Vesteros. Okay. Don't know what the Massachusetts is doing. Not quite sure why he's taken as long as he is to get into the fight, although I'm seeing some gun smoke there, so he is actually starting to get involved. Who is he shooting at? Why is he not shooting at the North Carolina? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Richelieu did get the kill on the Vesteros. Uh, both of the Tier 8 battleships completely ignoring the enemy Tier 8 battleship to chase down the enemy Tier 6 destroyer. Seems legit. Oh, I just want to pause things for a second. There's a little bit of street theatre just occurred. You may have missed it. I nearly did. We're going to wind the clock back a little and focus on the minimap. You see the enemy Graf Spee here? He's shooting at the friendly Bayern up there but he's hitting and sinking the enemy Zara next to the Bayern. Hey! <laughs> hey, a kill's a kill. I'd just like to draw your attention to the clusterfuck developing down to the south. That North Carolina barely has 20,000 health. The Lo Yang, Richelieu and Massachusetts fighting him have probably around about 100,000 health between them. Who do you think is going to win that fight? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's not going to be the Lo Yang, Richelieu and Massachusetts. I mean, technically there's an enemy Tirpitz getting involved as well. There he is, over to the left. But look at how much health he has. In fact, he's dead. Um, because the Richelieu is ignoring the North Carolina that he just sailed past. And is getting into a fight with yet another Tier 8 battleship instead. The Lo Yang is also ignoring the North Carolina. But surely the Massachusetts should be able to handle... I mean, look at the health difference between the two of them. Well, if you think that, you clearly haven't been watching this channel for very long. I was concerned that the two of them were going to go for the Ram. Certainly it might have been a decent option as far as the North Carolina was concerned, but no, he wants to fight and win. Meanwhile, beautiful target there, the New Orleans. Ty Gwen heading around the island in order to assist the Massachusetts, who obviously needs the help against the North Carolina on a fraction of his own health, and taking the opportunity to land some decent hits on that New Orleans. The New Orleans actually manages to finish off the Richelieu, and if you look at the map, I have no idea whatsoever what the Lo Yang is doing. I expected this to be a kill. Sadly, well, it's going to be a kill, but it's not going to be Ty Gwen's kill. Frankly, I think he was robbed there. Oh, wait, wait, no. The New Orleans put the fires out. This is going to be Ty Gwen's kill. Is it? Yes. Excellent. Yes, the Massachusetts is actually managing... The Massachusetts, remember, the close quarters brawler 
of the most devastating secondaries in the game is managing to lose a close quarters brawl to a North Carolina. A North Carolina who, until not very long ago, he had a 4 to 1 health advantage over. This is really happening. <laughs> we are not making this up. Although it's possible, in fact likely, that the Asashio may have had something to do with that. But what's the Lo Yang doing? Why isn't he helping? Well, he's going after the carrier, isn't he? Yep, there he is on the minimap. He's found the enemy carrier, which, let me remind you, is only tier 6. It's a Ryujo. And I can also disclose to you that that Ryujo is a new player. He has just barely more than 2,000 battles played, and he has a 43% win rating. He's not a very good new player, even by new player standards. And let us not forget that the Lo Yang is not just two tiers higher, but it's also a ship that's described on the World of Warships wiki as, and I quote, boasting powerful anti-aircraft guns. So that should be child's play for the Lo Yang. Yep, two-tier advantage over a carrier player with a 43% win rating. Really? What game have you been playing for the last year? That's suicide. <laughs> and yes, the Massachusetts did just die to the North Carolina's secondaries. Or to fires set by the North Carolina's secondaries. That really just happened. Hats off to that North Carolina. I mean, seriously, well done that player. Unfortunately, now you have to die. <laughs> but it's nothing personal. And there he goes. And there's the Asashio. Spotted by the friendly carrier. Let's focus on this Asashio for the minute, because Tai Gwen is, and rightfully so. It's a very dangerous ship, and it's on low health. And there's some, quite frankly, bizarre behaviour going on here. He's popped his smoke. That's not bizarre behaviour. When you're on that low health, and a destroyer and a heavy cruiser's firing at you, and hitting you, you pop your smoke if it's available. Particularly when you're being spotted from the air. But it's a good idea to stay in the smoke. <laughs> Something that, for some reason, the Asashio is resolutely not doing. I'm really struggling to understand what's going on here. At first I thought, well hang on, the Asashio is a premium isn't it? I mean anybody can buy a premium and just, you know, start playing above their level of competence, but no, that's, that's not the case. I don't want to be that guy who talks about people's stats in a negative way, but I do feel that there's something you can learn from it, because that Asashio has three times as many games played as the poor sap in the Ryujo who's busy kicking the shit out of the low Yang, by the way, and has a 3% better win rate than the Asashio player, who mostly plays Tier 10 Destroyers. Very, very badly. You know, for a guy with more than half of his games played in Destroyers, and more than half of his Destroyers games played in that Asashio, I think it's pretty clear that if you haven't learned how to play it by now, you probably never will. Can I recommend maybe switching to battleships or cruisers? You might actually enjoy it, because you can't possibly be enjoying losing 60% of the games that you play every time you're in a destroyer, because you're just that bad at them. Meanwhile, in shock news, and it really is shock news, the Lo Yang has managed to sink the Ryujo. The Tier 8 destroyer that, and I quote, boasts powerful anti-aircraft armament, unquote, has managed to sink the Tier 6 carrier played by somebody with just over 2,000 games played, and a terrible 43% win rating. Actually, it's lower in the Ryujo, it's only 40%, and the Lo Yang has managed to kill him. Wonders will never cease. I genuinely didn't see that one coming. However, there is a sting in the tale of this story. Can anybody remember how much health the Lo Yang was on the last time we saw him, when he abandoned his teammates in the Richelieu and the Massachusetts and went off chasing the enemy carrier to the southeast? I'll give you a clue. He was on full health. 17,800 health. How much health do you think he's on now? Come on, let's see your guesses. Post them down below in the comments, and don't cheat and skip ahead to the next time we see the Lo Yang's health bar. Come on, let's see your guesses in the comments before we get to the end of the video. Remember, Tier 8 Destroyer with powerful anti-aircraft guns on full health went after a Tier 6 carrier played by somebody who has a 40% win rating in that ship. Let's see your guesses. How much health does the Lo Yang have left right now? By the way, do you notice how... Uh, I've forgotten his name. <laughs> tai Gwen, that's it. Oh my god, I am crap. You wouldn't believe I do this for a living, would you? Um, 
But you notice how he's handling the Queen Elizabeth. He's let the friendly carrier do all the spotting and lobbing shots over the island. Uh, which you can do from this kind of range in a Prince Eugen. Obviously, if he was in an American light cruiser, he'd be able to get an awful lot closer and still be able to hit the Queen Elizabeth on the other side. But, uh, yeah, even this far away from the island, thanks to the flat firing arcs of the Prince Eugen's guns, a bit of a double-edged sword, 925 metres per second, great ballistics, but you can't really lob shots over islands the way that you can in an American cruiser. But he made the most of it, and he's done some damage at least. Looks like the Queen Elizabeth used the damage control. And it was just a single fire, but he had just been hit by the Rijas torpedo, so it's possible that he was flooding as well, and which case, yeah, absolutely, use the damage control. Especially since Taiwan can no longer effectively shoot at him, so there's no further immediate danger of any more fires being set. He still has to worry about those uh, dive bombers and torpedo bombers, though. But the Queen Elizabeth has an advantage over the War Spite in that respect. Um, they're both sister ships, they're both the same class, but whereas the War Spite has more accurate guns and slightly longer range secondaries, the Queen Elizabeth enjoys better anti-aircraft firepower. And hasn't taken that much damage yet, so most of those AA guns are probably still intact. Now there's the Graf Spee. That's the guy that team killed the Zara earlier. The last two enemy ships. Now we're going to get no help whatsoever from the Low Yang here who's taken this long to get from where he sank the Ryuzhou, and he's starting to flip the cap circle at Charlie. Which, given how much health he has remaining, is probably the best use of his talents. <laughs> <laughs> because the team are still way behind on points. And that's not a bad idea. There he is. 187 health. <laughs> It only cost him 98% of his health, went on full health, to kill a carrier two tiers lower than him, played by somebody with a 40% win rating in that aircraft carrier. And that tells you everything that you need to know about the carrier rework. Yeah, carriers are fine, folks. Remember, Wargaming said so. <laughs> the spreadsheet says, there's no problem. <laughs> right. Now, the Graf Spee also has torpedoes, and they're actually slightly better than the torpedoes carried by the uh, Prinz Eugen. They have an 8 kilometer range. So, they're probably on the way. And because Tai Gwen wasn't using premium consumables, his hydro is enough. On the other hand, the enemy Graf Spee is now so close that Tai Gwen's 6 kilometer range torpedoes are definitely within range. And yep, there are the Graf Spee's torpedoes, and Tai Gwen's almost certainly going to take one of those. And while it didn't cause any floods, he does have a double fire, and it did screw his engine. So now is definitely the time to use the damage control. The Graf Spee appears to have forgotten that the Prince Eugen has torpedoes of its own. There's a devastating strike, and the Kraken Unleashed kill number five. That just leaves the Queen Elizabeth. Now, Ty does have torpedoes on the other side of the ship, but if he swings around to get those torpedoes away, that Queen Elizabeth is going to give him an unholy spanking. But Ty does have one torpedo remaining. He can use the ship itself. And since he has two surviving teammates, and the enemy team don't have any, even though they were nearly 300 points behind, that's still a win for Ty's team. Six kills, 139,000 damage, devastating strike, Kraken unleashed, and high caliber in a rental ship with no premium consumables that he's only had for two days. Interestingly, the captain of the Zara, who got team killed by the Graf Spee, who forgot about the Prince Eugen's torpedoes at the end there, messaged Ty to congratulate him on his performance after the match. Which is nice to see, because it was a good performance, and the congratulations were very, very well deserved. And I hope you all agree, because that's it for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.